Hello, how are you doing? My name is Stephen Edwards and welcome to this week's video blog. Last week we talked about uh, fraud and ways uh, admin providers commit fraud in a therapy clinic. Uh, this week we are going to talk about uh, how you can combat that, how you can bring awareness to your clinic. So first we're going to talk, uh, we're going to start about uh, with the hiring process. Um, the uh, alerts uh, should start um, in the hiring process. So if you are interviewing somebody, you find out where they've worked, uh, therapy is a small world. You know, where they work, you might even know the, uh, the owner. Uh, reach out to that owner and find out from a, uh, you might say, hey, were they a good provider? Were they on time with the patients? That could also be, you know, was there any fraud uh, issues that you had with, uh, with that provider? So talk to your friends. Um, bring up ethics in the vetting process. When you are interviewing somebody, talk about where they've worked, what were their standards as, they, uh, as it relates to ethics and fraud. Um, if they worked someplace and you know, fraud was, they were doing a lot of uh, things that they probably shouldn't have been doing, um, they might do that at your place. Uh, so set those standards. Um, lastly, in the hiring process, make sure that all of your providers are on your ACA background check utility. They should all be listed. So if somebody goes out and uh, they get in a fight and they get arrested or they're drunk driving, anything like that, you will get an alert. Uh, and then you can contact that provider and either suspend them uh, if it's something, if they were in a fight or any kind of thing like that, or, uh, but you have the knowledge going into it of what they did. Uh, so let's talk about the ethics in your office now. You know, when we talked uh, a little bit ago about awareness, you have to create an awareness. Uh, so as an admin or owner, don't do anything that's questionable. If it's questionable, don't do it. Uh, and that will set that precedence that that fraud will not be uh, taken lightly and it will be addressed severely. Um, you being a, uh, a Medicaid uh, provider, if you are a Medicaid provider, you have to have a self audit program. We talked about that uh, on the last video. In my opinion, you should be auditing 10 to 20 percent of all the dates of service that you bill out. Uh, checking the notes, making sure that they're of quality. If you're still on paper, that you can read them. Make sure that the uh, everything is on the documentation that is needed to be on there. Um, secondly, take that a step further. You should have a QA program. You should be talking to those patients or those parents. Just call them up and say, hey, how was Samantha? How's your therapy going? Is she on time? Do you have any suggestions how we can do things better? And then if the parent or patient says, well, she was never here, that could be a potential issue. That's something that you can dive into and find out what's going on, okay? Um, secondly, uh, if somebody does do something that is fraud, you gotta report them. You gotta report them to ACA by you having a Medicaid number that you have to report. Um, and if that uh, licensure board, you should be contacting the licensure board and doing a uh, a report to their license uh, and let me just premise that because that's you know I, I that's very severe when you do that this is for fraudulent uh, fraud I know how serious that is getting with the ACA getting with uh, the licensing board but that is when you suspect or you can prove malicious fraud this is not if somebody bills a Wednesday instead of a Tuesday it was this administrative error I'm talking about they they build and didn't go treat uh, that is malicious fraud. If they are seeing somebody for a half an hour and reporting an hour every time, that's malicious fraud. You should do everything in your power uh, because they give therapy a bad name. Get them out of the ranks. Last thing that you can do inside of your uh, office is inspect what you expect. You bring an awareness, you tell everybody your expectations, and then you inspect and you create that awareness and you ask those questions. Hey, Samantha, you usually treat John on Tuesday. I noticed that you treat it on Wednesday. What that does, it's a mindset. Hey, somebody's looking at this. Somebody's asking me questions about this. Now they're gonna take a little bit more, uh, 
a little bit about ownership on all of the documentation and what they report as a, uh, as a visit. Uh, EEP, what does EEP do uh, to help with the fraud or the awareness in your clinic? First thing, get with me. Uh, call me if you have any questions, if Aka walks into your, uh, into your office, um, anything like that, get with me. If you receive something in the mail from United Healthcare uh, Community Plan, which that's going rampant right now, reach out to me, reach out to your account manager. We are your partners, we want to help you. So take a partner along with you. I can tell you that EEP does have an auditing program. We audit every week and we find out to make sure that we are giving you, our clients, quality uh, billing and uh, quality EOB processing and quality aging. Every aspect of our operation, a second person is looking at it, which is what you want and which is what I'm telling you to do. Just have somebody look at it. Have somebody aware of what's going on. But again, please get with me. Theraplan. Uh, Theraplan uh, is an EMR system that EEP, uh, myself and my team uh, built. And uh, the reason that we built it was for one EEP clients, but also all the EMRs out there, they do not tell you exactly what should be in your documentation. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that uh, Theraplan is audit proof uh, because I'm not putting in, or we are not putting in your data. The data is a big piece of the puzzle, but I can tell you they're audit guided. We've gone through Medicare, Medicaid, and we've gone through early steps. And if they require it, it's on our templates. Uh, so it's not you know, in some EMRs, you just have a box and you put all the dot data in there. Well, you're kind of just putting it out there for all of your providers, uh, not telling them what needs to be in that documentation. We talked about last week, an hour of service uh, and the documentation, the data that was in that uh, documentation was eight, ATE. That's all it said for an hour of service. Um, you know, that should have been caught by somebody. Somebody should have reviewed that and say, no, this is not a good note. She needs to go back and redo this note. Just to get a little bit more into, I mentioned uh, United Healthcare Community Plan. They seem to be the hot ones right now since I, I guess they moved out of, well, they've been doing it for about six months, but they've been sending out a lot of audits and recouping a lot of money. There was one situation, these are a couple things that the reasons why they're uh, taking back money. No duration on the notes. If you do not have duration, there's actually an EMR that didn't have duration on the, uh, on the notes. Uh, you are paid by time. You have to have duration. You have to have units. Um, no PCP. Uh, if you don't have a PCP uh, uh, listed with their MPI, it used to be their ACA number, but it can be their ACA number or MPI, that's an issue. You need to have that. You know, anybody can take back your money if you don't have that information on your documentation. If it's not legible, if you're not in an EMR, one, give me a call, let's talk about TheraPlan. But second, if you can't read a note, it's no note. It has to be legible. And if you read into the, in the ACA handbook, it says it has to be legible. Um, insufficient data. You know, again, just to, to tell you that uh, that one eight for an hour, you know, that, that is this not good documentation. So I, I hope that this creates a discussion inside of your clinic. Uh, that is the sole purpose of these videos is to start the discussion, give you, this is not totally encompassing of everything that you can do to deter fraud in your clinic. But again, it's just to start that conversation that you can have with your, your office manager, with your, your, uh, the providers that work for you. Um, anybody around the clinic uh, and make sure that you are following some basic guidelines and awareness, bring an awareness and a, the right culture to your clinic. So next week we're not going to have a video. Uh, this Friday I'm going uh, to Breckenridge, Colorado to snowboard. Uh, for those of you that know me well, um, I, that's, that's my thing. The winter is my summer. Uh, I enjoy going out uh, and doing some snowboarding. So I will be back next Wednesday and uh, we will get uh, a video out to you. Our next series is gonna be on financials, 2018 financials. I'll be sending everybody their financials and uh, I will also send you uh, how you compare to the EEP community. You know, like, uh, 
like clinics. How do you compare to like clinics? Obviously, you won't, they won't be able to tell, you won't be able to tell you know, what clinics I'm talking about, uh, but I think it's just good. People like to say, this is my average per session. The EEP community's average per session is $2 more. Why is mine lower? And we can have those discussions as I send those to you. Uh, we can get on the phone and we can talk about things that, uh, that you have questions about. Okay, so I hope uh, you have a great week and thank you for watching this video blog.